What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Calgary Barbell 2 Form Check Friday, Bryce's birthday edition. It is actually my birthday, I'm 32 years old. And um, yeah, that's pretty cool. So I'm having a good day. Um, without any further ado, uh, we'll kind of run through the basics. So if you're interested in getting your technique looked at on our Form Check Friday, what you can do is send your email into formcheckfriday at gmail.com. Give us a little bit of context. Tell us a little bit about yourself, whether you're going to compete, what you're planning to do. Um, maybe even if you have some issues that you think um, need to be addressed in your technique, then that gives us a little bit of a better idea of what to pick apart, what to look for, what to look at. So um, last week we left off with Shania. And we had a bunch of people uh, in chat give some ideas of what they thought was going on with Shania's technique. Now, so with Shania's squat here, I think that the uh, there were some comments by, let's see here, um, Imran Hassan made a good point that her hips shoot up a little bit out of the bottom. Um, the torso angle he thought looks pretty good on the way down. Richard Wagner also said he'd recommend try not to stay so upright if she's squatting low bar. Um, and if her, if her hips are shooting back that little bit, try to embrace the lean a little bit more on the way down. And those would honestly be in line with my recommendations. So I think the big thing here is that um, we can see as Shania descends, she's fairly upright as she hits the bottom. She's maybe getting a little bit tipped forward. We're maybe seeing the hips shoot just a tiny bit up. I think the other part of that is that when she gets into the bottom, everything kind of pops forward. I'm sorry, I don't know why my arrows are so gigantic there. Um, but we can see just as she descends from about here, now from this point, what I'd like to see is for Shania's hips to go pretty much straight down and for her knees to sort of stay at this same angle. What happens is the knees pop forward and the hips go down and under like that. So we can see the knees pop forward and then what happens is we try to regain position, the shins go back again um, and we end up seeing this like little bit of a shift in, in position. So I think if you could get into the habit of dropping a little bit more smoothly and a little more straight down into the bottom instead of popping forward. I think that would help with a number of those issues. So um, between the critiques and criticisms or comments of our other viewers and what I've just said, hopefully that helps you out, Shania. All right, our next one is gonna come from Timmy Wynn. Now, Timmy Wynn is, uh, lives in Fort Worth, Texas. And he says he's been lifting for a little over a year now. His goal is to improve on the big three lifts, but mostly his bench. He plans to compete next year with the goal in the mind to gain experience and have fun, which honestly should be the goal of any first meet, in my opinion. He says he's used some tips from our bench setup uh, and it works wonders for his upper back tightness, so thanks a bunch. He submitted a video of a trimetric landscape view. Uh, I'm not sure what that means, but thanks, man. The video looks great. Uh, six reps at RPE seven. I feel as if I have trouble initiating proper leg drive. I feel like my butt is coming off the bench, but I'm unsure since I have no one to tell me if I really am. I also acknowledge that I need to pause on my chest a little longer. I just feel that he's uh, he's unconfident or not, not very confident in his ability, so he wouldn't pause until the last rep. <clears throat> so let's try to address this bit by bit here. So his first thing is he says he has issues with leg drive. So let's see here. I think the leg drive looks pretty good because the, the way that I coach leg drive and the way that I try to get most people to use leg drive is basically we're just trying to push ourselves back on the bench. That's gonna push our body back onto our traps. It's gonna help drive the shoulder blades down and it's gonna help drive the chest up. And the way that I coach and the way that I talk about leg drive most of the time is that it's a very continuous thing throughout the full set from the unrack to the re-rack. We wanna have that leg drive nice and consistent. What a lot of people think about leg drive is that as the bar comes off your chest, you want this big jolt up this way with your legs to kind of push the bar back and get it started. Now, just because you're not getting that doesn't mean that you're not getting leg drive. Your butt to me looks like it's staying on the bench, but what I would do is I would just set up this camera a little bit more over here so you could film straight on from the side and that way you can see if you have any daylight under your butt because that's what they're gonna be looking for in a meet. Next, uh, he acknowledges he needs to pause on the chest but feels a little bit unconfident, uncomfortable uh, with the pause. 
I think the big thing is just to do it, man. Just lower your training max a little bit. Um, lower your expectations for what you're trying to move um, each and every set and rep and just pause, right? Because the, the pause reps are going to be the truest way of estimating what you're capable of in a competition. So therefore, those will be the probably the most useful tool in your arsenal. Now, yes, touch and go bench does sometimes have a place in people's programming, um, but you have to be clear about your intent. And right now, your intent is to get ready for a competition. So let's get to pausing every rep. Nice one, one and a half count pause, I think will go a long ways. Now, our next one comes from Emmanuel. Emmanuel uh, says, hello, Calgary Barbell team, big fan of your work. His goal, he would like to compete one day and go as far as he's able to naturally in powerlifting. Issues he's working on are he's struggling to get into the initial position, especially the flat back, but he works on his mobility a lot. He finds it very exhausting just to create the initial tension and feels like he's leaking power just to set up. This video is a set of eight with 405. He says, cheers and thank you for your help and time. All right, so I'm just gonna start this video over so I can see what we're working with here. So the start position actually looks pretty damn good to me. I think one thing we're missing is we're missing, missing tension into the bar. So as you get into this position, I don't want you to just sit the hips down. I want you to, I want you to pull yourself in. I want you to pull down, pull this, pull the shoulder blades down, try to create tension, uh, upwards tension on the bar before you even get into position. So you can see there's this kind of like jolty movement here where we start to see the hips come up, we start to get pulled forward in the shoulders. Creating that position should be a little bit taxing. We should be feeling tight, we should be feeling tension through the quads, the glutes, the hamstrings, the upper back, the lower back. We should be really tight into that bar before we start the pull. And what's happening here is we're getting into a good position, but then we're just pushing. We're not tight beforehand. We're not creating tension in the bar, we're not pulling the slack out of the bar. Now, in terms of the, the hip height is, is sort of rising as we go through this set, um, which again, isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it does mean um, that we're not getting as much sort of leg drive, as much quads off the bottom. So that's one thing I think we could work on there is trying to maintain that same hip height. And if it's a higher hip height to start with, that's fine. But I don't wanna see as big a difference between first rep and eighth rep. Now, obviously we're going to see a difference if we're using any appreciable amount of weight. Uh, that was a pretty good rep actually, and I think that was the last one. So overall, you're actually maintaining your technique pretty well throughout the set. I think the big thing here is to learn how to pull the slack out of the bar. And I'm gonna get Dylan to put a video up here, card, link to one of our videos, and you guys can go check that out. We talked a fair bit in depth about how to pull the slack out of the bar, which I believe is a very important cue when it comes to the deadlift. Now, our next submission is gonna come from Pietro. Pietro, Pietro, I'm sure, I'm not sure uh, exactly how to pronounce your last, uh, first name, rather. <laughs> uh, so Pietro, Pietro, we're doing some equipped lifting here, which is cool, I really like looking at it. Um, and critiquing and, and seeing more equipped lifting, it makes me happy. So he's from Italy, he says he's fallen in love with our YouTube channel, absolutely an oasis in the desert. Um, especially in terms of uh, equipped powerlifting, he says. So he's writing to you because he's approaching the equipped world, which he loves after his first year of competing powerlifting raw. He's got two videos here, one's 250 kilos, one's 260 kilos. He's aiming for his first 300, but his form is never really the same. He's having some troubles. He says he finds the suit still very uncomfortable, which yeah, is, is normal. Um, oh, sorry, the suit is still very comfortable and is not a performing suit. He's gonna have to try to make it smaller for his first nationals in December, but in order to do that, he'd like to fix his technique. Um, okay, so let's take a look at this uh, squat that y'all have watched a few times now. So again, I, th like, I think the big thing here is we're, we're losing the upper back into the bottom. We're kind of letting those shoulders loose right as you, as you start your drive out of the bottom. This is pretty damn good depth, especially for training depth in a suit. We're like right on the line of parallel. You know, we get up to opener and above, we're gonna see that dip put us a little bit better into depth. So I would say this is definitely acceptable training depth, but it's that jolt out of the bottom where we're coming forward. 
that's going to mess things up a little bit. So I would say embrace the lean a little more on the way down. Let that chest down, brace a little tighter, make sure you're pulling that upper back tight as you sit into the bottom. So the other thing with lifting equipped is right about here, all I'm thinking about is pulling this, all of this as tight as I possibly can and being patient. So conversely to what a lot of lifters will coach in terms of like trying to approach the bottom very speedy so you get a big bounce. I did that once and um, ended up dumping like 780 off my back and just like it was a, this big catastrophic thing. So I don't squat fast. I don't sit into the suit fast. Um, that is one thing that a lot of people recommend and that's not a wrong recommendation but I'm just presenting an alternate viewpoint. For me, like I said, what I do when I get to this point is I focus on all of this, just trunk and upper back tightness as tight as I possibly can and I just kind of wait. I'm not actively trying to pull deeper. I'm not trying to drive up yet. I'm just trying to hold position and let the weight push me down into the bottom of the suit. So I'm maintaining all of that tension through the trunk. And then once you hit that depth, then start pushing back up. But I think if you can focus a little more on that, um, that'll probably help you put a little bit better position uh, into and out of the bottom. So now let's take a look at this 260 he sent in and see if we're, see, the big thing here is we're initiating just knee bend. So another one of our videos, um, specifically with Liz Craven, which she talks about setting uh, your hinge, right? So your brace is okay. I think one of the things you need to do is again, really focus on tightening up that upper back and that shelf. And once you have, push those hips back to start. So you can set the torso angle. Once the torso angle is set, it stays consistent down to the bottom and back up. What's happening here is you're starting very upright, you're bending your knees, and then as you go down, we're gonna see a shift in the trunk position. Watch, I bet you. Let's see, do we see a big change in the trunk position? Yes, we do. Because you're fighting to stay very, very upright on the way down. Very, very upright, knees forward, knees forward, knees forward, right about here. Now you're already halfway through the squat and you're having to change your torso angle. Because you're running out of ankle flexibility which is fine. This is probably as far forward. Um, you know, we'll maybe get the, f that back knee to about there, but the rest of the, the sort of flexion that's going to get you into depth, um, is going to be in the hips, right? So that means the hips are going to have to sit back further and further and further right there. So now this is our torso angle. So we're here. And I would like to see you set that a little higher up. Because right here, you can see how different that angle in the torso is. We're here. And it may only look like a few degrees there, but I think especially in a suit, that makes a big difference. So set that torso angle. And this goes the same for raw squats. A lot of people who tip forward in the bottom of their raw squats are not setting their torso angles. They're not setting their brace and their hinge when they initiate the lift. So they're coming down super upright and then having to shift so that they can actually get even anywhere close to depth. Alrighty. So we have another one here from Rodrigo. Rodrigo Fort from Monteverdo, Mont Montevideo in Uruguay. He says he's been watching our videos uh, for a long time now. I'm just going to pop one up in the background while I read this for you guys. And that uh, he's 22 years old. He says he's got a lot that he wants to improve on. Um, he's currently running the barbell medicine program. He said he loves the video and service to the lifters. Um, two sets of bench with different angles. So he wants to take a look at his bench press. Let's see what we see here. All right, so as anybody who's followed this series for a while knows the first thing we're gonna look at is the unrack, which looks pretty good. Unrack looks pretty good. I think the chest fell quite a bit as he descended on that first rep. Second rep a little bit better in terms of keeping the chest reaching up to the bar. Third rep, bar path was a little bit off, not pressing back and up. So that, was, that was a better rep. So now let's, let's break this down sort of rep by rep. So I said that the setup was pretty good. The unrack was okay. All right, so the unrack, now if we draw a little circle around the shoulder blades, we essentially don't wanna see them move from that position because um, what Rodrigo has done here is he's 
essentially really sort of retracted, pull the shoulder blades back and pull the shoulder blades down. So retracted and depress the shoulder blades. That's great. That's exactly how you want to set up for a powerlifting style bench press. Now when he unracks, you can see we really reach forward. So the unrack was okay. We didn't see a huge amount of movement in the shoulder blade, but we did see that range of motion go from potentially here to here, right? And you can see my the difference in my hands here. So if we're retracted, we're here. When we're not, we're here. So I'm gonna show that from the side. Retracted, not retracted. Retracted, not retracted. Now, the reason that comes into play is because, watch what happens next. So as he comes down, in this bottom of the range of motion, we're starting to see the chest collapse a little bit. We're starting to see this come down as he, come, as, as he brings the bar down. Now, one of the things we wanna make sure we're doing is again, driving those legs. We talked a little bit about this on a previous video today. Driving the legs this way and really reaching that chest up to meet the bar. We wanna be actively thinking about bringing the chest up to meet the bar throughout the whole movement, especially on the descent and into the touch. Bar path, again, not great there. So something again we can work on is trying to make sure that we press back and then up. And I'll show you all exactly what I mean here. So we're in the pause position here. What we're looking for in terms of the bar path is for the bar to go back and then straight up. What a lot of more novice lifters will do is they'll press straight up and then back. So we end up in a similar place but this being a more ideal bar position because it more quickly gets the bar back over the center of the shoulder, which is the joint producing the force. So we have, we're working against leverage less or working against less leverage or maximizing the leverage for us. Now that I've, I've made the green and the red. Um, hold on here, there we go. Wanted to keep those up. So again, we can see that more closely followed the up and back path, right? Up and then back. As opposed to back and then up. This rep, back and up, a little bit better, a little bit better. This rep, up and then back. So there's some work on bar path that needs to be done. There's work on leg drive and being consistent with the leg drive, because we can see as well, when he comes down onto the chest, things dip a little bit. I think his leg drive lessens and kind of loosens towards the bottom, which is again, something we want to keep very consistent throughout the whole set. Now, if we pull up Rodrigo's other video here, we can probably even illustrate that bar path point that I'm trying to make a little bit better. So let's pull this over here and let's try to take a look at this bar path. Yep, that's exactly it. So let's get this back onto his chest. There we go. So again, what we want to see, and I know I've probably talked this to death, but for anybody who hasn't heard me talk about bar path on the bench press, we're gonna talk about it a little bit more now. Versus up and then back. So both end up pressing to a very similar spot, but the green one is going to be a lot more optimal generally gonna be a lot faster. If you ever see somebody miss a bench press, a lot of the time what happens is they press the bar out this way and the bar gets way too far from the joint producing the force, which means in a lot of cases we miss the rep or it's way harder. That was a bit better, that was more back and up. Yeah, so right now a lot of what he's got going on is like a pretty straight, See, there we go. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That was exact. That last one is exactly what I'm talking about. So this one, he actually, the, we'll, we'll see the bar go this direction off his chest and start to start to fly out the wrong way. There we go. And then he brings it back and then manages to finish it. So the biggest thing I think I would point out or focus on there is going to be getting consistent with the bar path. Now our last video for the day, we're gonna leave this up and we're gonna have everybody critique Daniel. Let me read a little bit about Daniel here. Daniel says he's from sunny Singapore, a tiny country in Asia, um, for anybody who doesn't know what Singapore is. Uh, he says he absolutely loves the content on YouTube and it's been so inspirational and helpful in his lifting journey. I'm super glad to hear that. So he's been lifting consistently for about six months now and he's kind of training towards 
an in-between of powerlifting and hypertrophy, okay? So some power building, as much as a lot of people hate those buzzwords. I mean, it's appropriate in this setting, I think. Um, he doesn't particularly train with any compete, or sorry, any aim to compete at any point in time soon. Here's a video of his deadlifts, the fourth set of four reps at 82.5%. He's new to sumo and finds it can find that conventional pulls tend to fire up his piriformis syndrome more, so he would appreciate any advice and feedback on his lifts. So I want everybody in the comments section to let us know what you think of Daniel Sumo. What do you think he could be doing better? What kinds of cues would you tell him if you were coaching him? What do you think are his sort of main mistakes? And um, yeah, what, what do y'all think about it? And then next week to start our episode off, I will probably pick a few comments that I think hit the nail on the head. I'm just gonna restart this. Um, hit the nail on the head. And then I will give my two cents as well on Daniel's technique. So that is going to be it for today, everybody. So thank you all for tuning in very, very much. If you'd like to get your form checked, go ahead and send an email to formcheckfriday at gmail.com. And uh, we will randomly pick a few squats, benches, and deadlifts for each week. And um, yeah, thank you all for tuning in. If you liked the content, leave a thumbs up. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more. And if you're a fan of the form check, you can come to our live stream every Friday, 12 p.m. MST. We'll probably miss a few in November. I'm going to be overseas competing, but um, Form Check Friday, we will be doing at 12 p.m. MST on twitch.tv slash Calgary Barbell. You guys can head over there and check us out on Twitch. We do the live form checks. It's quite a time. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Take care, everybody. See you in the next one.